This is the second question I got for my ByteDance interview. This is still in the first interview, by the way. So my first interview has two questions. The first question I mentioned in the previous video is a hard question, and this is the second question. And by this time, we only left about 15 to 20 minutes. So he said, you don't have to write the actual code for this question. So as long as you walk through your, your logic and steps, you're, you're good to go. And then we will have five to 10 minutes for a Q&A. I have done this question before, so I know it is dynamic programming straight away. You are also given a grid. Each cell of the grid can only have two value, zero or one. And for this specific question, the type is of character or char. Uh, if you want to put it as integer, it doesn't really matter. And you want to find the largest square containing only ones and return this area. So in this specific test case, it is four. Now, if we fill up this zero as one and this zero as one, you will return nine. For this grid, we can tell the maximum area is 4. There are two of them, this one and this one. If we alter the, the grid and change this cell to 1 and change this cell to 1, the value of the maximum square will be 9. One observation is the biggest square does not have to happen at the end. By at the end, I mean the bottom right side is this cell, because for this grid, the biggest square is in the middle, somewhere in the middle. So if you have a result variable that is initialized to zero, we may have to keep overriding that value when we are visiting each cell. So assuming you are visiting each cell, going to here, 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 you are trying to find the biggest square with that cell as the bottom right. When you are here, what is the maximum side? Assuming I am the bottom right of the square. For this case, it's just one. Now, for this cell, the value is zero, so it doesn't qualify. For this cell is one, zero, zero. Now for this cell, it is also one. Just to be more explicit, I'm trying to find out what is the maximum side of the square, assuming each cell is the bottom right of their square? Then for this cell, zero, side will be zero. For this side, one, value will be one. One is still one. One is still one. And later we will see some pattern. For this cell, one, still one, one. Now for this cell, for this cell that I am highlighting in red, the maximum possible side length, if that cell is the bottom right of a square, will be two, right? Because this is a square. For the next cell is the same, it's also two. Let's keep going. For this cell is one, zero, zero, one, zero. Let's look at this cell with the coordinate of 2, 3. The value is dependent on the three neighboring cells, right? Being the top, the left, as well as the top left. And the value of this cell may be potentially higher than my top left's value by 1, right? Because my top left is a square of side of 1, and for me, I can at best have the value of side of 2. But it is only contingent on the fact that my left and my top are minimum 1. If any one of them is 0, I cannot be 2. So think of it as, for my current cell, I have a chance to have an upgrade on top of my top left. But I can only acquire this upgrade if my left as well as my top satisfy some circumstance. And the circumstance can be their value has to be at least matching my top left. 
Now let us make some changes to the original cell. Let us make this cell is 1, this cell is 1, this cell is 0. And let us update the value inside our DP matrix. The matrix on the right is our DP matrix. So this value will be 1, this value will be 0, this value will be 1. Let's examine the last cell, this cell. This cell had a potential chance of acquiring an upgrade from its top left, right? But it ended up failing to get an upgrade because the cell on the left failed to satisfy the circumstance. The cell on the top satisfied, but the cell on the left did not. That's why my cell failed to get the upgrade. What will be a case when my cell get an upgrade? Is when my left cell is 1. So if your left cell is 1, your DP value will be 2, then my value can be 3, right? Your original square has a square of 3. But because my left is 0, and 0 is less than 2, so I cannot get an upgrade. So you can see my cell has a bottleneck, and a bottleneck is actually the smallest value among my top, my top left, as well as my left. My value will be the smallest value amongst them, plus 1. Plus 1 because I can have an upgrade on top of my top left, and the upgrade is limited by how bad my top and my left is. That's why you need to get a minimum of the three. Now let us write the actual code. Let us initialize a variable called area. So this area will be our final result. And this area will be overwritten every step along the way when we visit every cell. Also have some variable to make our life easier. R is row, C is column. Now, just in case the matrix is empty, we return zero. And so we will visit, okay, we will have a DP matrix. This DP matrix will have the same size as the original, but in order to make coding easier, let us expand the size by 1. And the value is initialized as 0. Bear in mind the value represents the longest side of square if I am the bottom right of their square. So let us iterate over the DP matrix, not the original matrix, but the DP matrix. Now this DP matrix can only qualify if the original matrix value is 1. So the original value has an index of offset of 1. So you need to i minus 1, j minus 1 equals 2. Now we are using char here, so let's check against char. Char I mean character data type. And let us have a value called side. So this side is the bottleneck between my top, my top left, as well as my left. So you can have a minimum between my top, which will be i minus 1, j. My top left will be i minus 1, j minus 1. And let us have left as well. Uh, OK, this is getting confusing. I may have a syntax error somewhere, but I'm not sure. And the bottleneck plus one. So the maximum area may potentially get overwritten. And we will update the DP array value. 
we may potentially update. Let's see if this works. Oh. I should update the value as the side instead of the area. And my column should be column plus one. So this works. You can actually optimize away some space as well, because right now my DP array is created on my own. So the space complexity is R by C, R being row number, C being column number. But uh, I'm not going to deal with it because during the actual interview, I didn't have to write this code anyway because we were only left with 10 minutes. If you want to optimize some, away some space, you can do that as well. So this is the second question that I got in my first round of interview.